Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to talk about something called a git branching workflow or a branching model or a branching flow which all basically loosely mean the same thing and it's based around the idea that as many people are writing software out of a single code base you need somehow to manage all that and be able to make sure that there is no conflict between two developers working on separate features or at which point you release software to production and how do you keep doing that fast so in this video, I'm going to take a look at the two most popular ones, Git Flow and GitHub Flow. And they're both good for different reasons, and maybe they're both bad or unsuitable to your use case for different reasons as well. I'm going to take a look at them individually, and then I'm going to talk about my experience using them, because I have used both of them, and I am actually using one of them actively right now to ship software to production and give you my opinion. If you like this type of content and you want to see more, make sure you're subscribing to the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So what do I have here? First, let's take a look at Git flow. Now, before any workflow, the way I used to develop software that I was writing just for myself was I would just keep adding commits into main branch. And that's it. And at some point I would just post production and then commits and then production. The problem with this approach is that if you have more than one people just working on a software code base, then you cannot just do that because at which point is this my release? And at which point is this, you know, someone else's release where you have this sort of mixing of commits. It just won't work. It's very, very tough. So in the beginning, there was Git flow. And let me just make this a bit bigger and give you the name up here. So Git flow has the following structure. And for the avoidance of any doubt, main over here is basically the master branch now called main. And we're using more inclusive language. So this is what it means in case you're a bit confused. And then the main branch, when created in Git flow, also has a second branch, which is the develop branch. And the relationship between develop and main is that main is code that technically has been or can be individually deployed into production. Develop is being actively worked on in some way. And I'm going to explain what that way looks like. So develop will be branched off of main when main was created. So here, this was created from main. And then as people want to work on features, they create what's called feature branches. And these can be many. I'm, I'm going to create one here for the purpose of the video, but they can be many because multiple people can be working on different branches and different features at the same time. And this is going to be called feature. And feature branches usually have a name along the lines of feature forward slash and then what you're doing with that feature, what it is about. And what happens is at this point, you're creating that feature branch from develop at some point in time. Now, many of them can be made, so someone else could come here and then you have another feature being worked on. That's absolutely fine. But that one that you originally created here to do your feature is yours to work with. And then you keep adding commits here. And then at some point you're like, oh, this feature is complete, what I can do now is I'm going to create a pull request or a PR. And once people approve it, they can come in, comment, say, I don't like this code, this won't work, this does work. And then once that's done, you can merge it back into develop. So at this point, develop has this new feature, but this is not in production yet. Uh, some people like to, at this point of the PR, also push to something like a QA environment, where you might have a QA engineer jump in and do some sanity checks or run some automation tests for that specific feature, you can do that, that's totally fine. But you usually don't do that on develop. Develop keeps having things added to it from other branches. And at some point, once develop has enough features merged back into it, you have what is called a release branch. So you say, oh, fine, we have the 10 features we wanna ship now to production. So what we're gonna do is we are going to create a release branch. And this release branch will have code from develop. So we create the release branch, usually with a name called release or slash and the version of the release. So let's say 1.0. And then here, the moment you have this release branch, you don't add more features to it. The release is feature complete. And what you usually do is you push that release branch all the way to pre-production. And then you run your automation tests. Maybe you have end-to-end -end tests. Maybe you run a full suite of testing. This is completely up to you, but this is your chance before you push to prod to actually make sure that this code base is solid and it works and the features are there bug free. And once you're happy with that, then what happens is this release branch is being merged into master. And at this point it's being tagged 
with a release. That's a git tag. And this means that at this point, this main branch can be deployed to production without presumably any problems. Now, what you also need to do at this point to make sure that the branching strategy can work without any desync problems is this main branch needs to be merged back into develop. And that's the main flow. There is another type of branch that you can have in this flow, and that's called the hotfix branch. So usually what happens, um, well, actually, hopefully not usually, uh, but sometimes what happens is you have an issue that's critical and it shouldn't go through this whole flow because it's just very slow to do so and you need to push it to production very very quickly so what you do is you create a hotfix branch straight out of main then you fix the problem and then you merge here you tag that and then you also merge that fix into develop and of course at the point of merging in main you also push into production now let's talk about this flow a bit because i think it's doing some things right but also it can't really be used if you want to encourage some behaviors for example the fact that you have more controlled releases might mean that this model lends itself easier to more monolithic applications where many features constitute a release and you might want to be very methodical in how you deploy that However, if you're working on microservices and you're encouraging a continuous delivery and continuous deployment model, this thing doesn't really work because it's quite slow and it has quite a lot of process. And GitHub saw that and they're like, I think we can do better. So what they did is the following. They created something called the GitHub flow. And the GitHub flow looks something like this. It all starts again with a main branch. But it is way, way simpler. What happens is you still have the same concept of a feature branch, even though you don't necessarily need to call it a feature branch. It's just what you're working on. And the idea is that this individual thing you're working on should be deployable to production. We're going to still call it feature for the sake of consistency, but you can call it task. You can call it anything you want. And as you can tell, not everything probably is deployable to production instantly, individually, independently. But in a microservice environment, it's way, way easier to do that because things are way more isolated. So what happens is main is being branched into that feature branch. Then you keep adding code. Then at this point, a pull request is created again. And at this point, as it's created, you can actually push all the way to QA. And some people are actually pushing all the way to pre-production. That is totally fine. It depends on how your testing suite and integration suite uh, is built. So if you want to, you can push it to pre-prod. And at this point, as this PR is open, you keep adding missing things or fixing bugs as they're coming in from the QA engineers. And when you're ready and everyone has approved this PR, you merge back into main and at this point we assume you're happy with the release so at this code base this feature that has been merged into main goes into prod now you can see that this iteration loop is very quick you branch off main you add commits you create a pr you push at this point some people push even to production before they merge into main they have that type of confidence I'm more of a scary cat when it comes to this, so I'm usually going to push all the way to pre-production, ideally, if I haven't merged into main, but some people do and they have great success into it. It really comes down to the maturity of the team and the software. That's why Git flow might look a bit convoluted, but it's way more structured, while GitHub flow might look like the wild, wild west. But in reality, if you have a world oil machine, it can actually be way more effective in making sure you deploy code constantly into production. And by deploying small pieces to production constantly, you eliminate a lot of room that you might have for error here, because if you have five features and one of those features has a bug, the whole release goes down and you lose four good features and because of the one bad one. While in GitHub flow, if something goes wrong with this release, worst case scenario, you just roll back to the previous one. And that's it, there's nothing more to it. And this is exactly what I've seen in the past as well. With GitHub flow, because the code you deploy usually is way less, it eliminates a lot of room for error, big errors anyway, and the recovery is very fast. Now, this does mean that the team needs to be on the same page with how we deploy software, but it really allows you to make the best use of the tooling you might have. For example, if you want to do A-B deployments, canary releases, those are things you can do way, way easier if you deploy smaller pieces of code more constantly than huge pieces of code less regularly. Ultimately, I can't tell you what to use. This really comes down to how your team can adopt those flows but i can guarantee you that if you don't have one of those flows currently it can really really give structure to your software development and really help you do safer 
and more tracks releases. Ultimately, it's a decision you'll make, but here's everything you need to know about those two flows. I'm going to put more links in the description. GitHub has an interactive page and GitFlow has been around for years and years. So I'm going to find a good resource for that and I'm going to put it down below if you want to read more. But this is all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.